in this video, we'll be learning about an aggressive opening. It's a fun, sharp, and trash to play for the win as black. And this opening is called the Dragondorf Sicilian. For the opening moves in this video, it has been verified over three months by myself, my Grandmaster Coach Eugene Perlstein, and verified by Stockfish and Leela together to make sure that we have the accurate material to get you the wins and have fun along the way. It comes from this opening after e4, c5, f3, d6, d4, cd, knight takes there, knight f6, knight c3, and now we have g6. So the dragon dwarf, dragons, comes before the Nydorf. So g6, basically, the order is dragon first and Nydorf second. Nydorf will be introduced later on, but first now, g6 is the first move. And bishop e3, but let's take a moment to talk about f4 for a brief moment is another move that can occur but there's no serious attempt to do an advantage so knight c6 take take e5 is important to know how to play against this but it's only a really brief summary it's not really serious but knight d7 taking e5 twice they take there take the e pawn but it should be three and they want to do pretty two castle to queen size is a goal that white has but we just do bishop b7 keep in mind not to blunder the d6 pawn by going bishop b7 for example so queen d2 we castle the castle we go d5 to solidify the control of the center and control e4 so they can go g4 if they want to but we just go queen a5 aggressive determination and we have the flexibility to get this bishop out and win the game so this one can be one as normal rook b8 basically x-raying the king the b fell is a safe thing to do is black bishop b4 is fine bishop b4 in the face of white f5 no problem c5 happens knight d5 and the cool thing is we go takes d4 the knight is seven but there's no problem we go king d7 don't take the knight of course the the queen will be hanging so we're smarter than that we go king g7 Instead, after queen d4, we go queen e5 to interpose this check, and the game is really much better for black. So that's it for this f4 variation. Instead of f4, let's do the main move by far, which is bishop e3. And now black goes bishop g7, then go f3 or queen e2. So the point is. They want to do queen e2, but the problem is now knight g4 is a really annoying move to see. So that is why they usually go instead f3 and then queen d 2 So this point, we have this a6 move. The Nidorf version comes into play. a6 in this move, 7. So why can you go queen e2, bishop c4, or g4? So the main point is... Let's say the standard move is queen there, d2. Now we go with this lovely move, h5. That's making it fun for black to play. And it was guarding h6 from this dragon, let's say, Lugoslav attack, because the bishop and the rook are guarding this h6 square. And h5 is scourging a little bit white to castle on the king side. Knowing that we want to go h5, some people try to play g4 to stop and dissuade from going h5. But the cool thing is, if we go h5 anyways, doesn't matter, doesn't matter a thing. They go g5, because they want to see, be proud of themselves, but we go knight d7. Queen d2, we go castle and king side, they go castle and queen side. Now b5 launching an aggressive attack on the queen side already. So f4, b4, knight d5, and now we go e6, attacking the knight on d5. Then go knight takes b4. Try to be proud of themselves, but we have open lines. E4 is attacked, and we have a good, really good bishop on B7, a really good bishop on B7. Both bishops are really cutting and slicing and dicing the board, and it's a really good composition for the pawn, at least, very least. So they can go bishop B2 to defend that one if they want to, but after this knight B6, I think that I can consider that black has full compensation for the pawn. We have open lines. We have the C file. We have the two bishops really, really cramming down the board. Nice two force coming in. And we have really fun, good game. Trying to play for the win at the very least. So at this point, after the seventh move, F3, like we talked about, A6, the Nidorf is introduced. 
Queen 2 is the main move, but let's talk about Bishop c4 a little bit because, well, Queen 2 will be transposing to include that Bishop c4 move, then therefore we're not going to talk about Bishop c4 lines because it'll be included in this Queen d2 main move by far. This is a big chunky chapter. So let's see, after h5, why it has a lot of moves. So let's say this part is part A. Bishop c4 is the main move. So we go this point b5. Attacking the bishop c4, we have major responses for this one b5. So we can go bishop b3 or bishop d5. Let's say the bishop d5 move is looking more interesting, attacking the rook on a8. At this point, we go knight takes d5, knight takes back, and then the cool move we go is e6. And e6 allows us to, after knight b6 is a really clever move, we have just simply queen takes b6 in this very sharp lines in Sioux. But trust me, I verified this with my coach, also Sockfish15, and Leela, and everything's fine and fun for black to play for the win. So they go knight takes e6 in this point. We go queen takes e3, queen takes e3, bishop takes e6, castles queenside is the one main move. So if they go c3, we just castle. The castle is fine, rook e8, rook d1. So the plan is to go knight d7, knight e5, knight e4, and the three pieces are generally in this position better to play for the win than the lone queen. We're going back to this one line, bishop b5, knight takes b5, knight takes b5, e6, knight b6, queen takes b6, knight takes e6, Queen takes e3, queen takes e3, bishop e6. White mainly goes queenside castling here. We go knight d7. And don't worry about the pawn. We have composition. Knight e5, knight c5, rook c8 is coming. And let's say the game continues after rook c8 to line up with the king on c1, alignment with this open lines with the bishop, and the knight will come in to have some fun. So after doubling, we go knight c5 like we want to. So there's a lot of moves. Let's say the main move is king b1 to getting out of the x-ray. So we go castles kingside. It's fine. So this is a lot of moves. Let's talk about one at a time. So the main scary move is queen g5. Why is that? We have to be very careful. So the main move we should do is this case king h7. King h7 is necessary because we want to have this bishop a6 move coming up. Possibly. So, in this case, they go as white a3 to just basically go g4. If they go g4 right now, we'll do hg. They go queen h4 in our mouse little thing. King g8, f4. Trying to be scary, but rook f8 is fine. And the game is nowhere near a problem it's for black. And we have really good position. No problem. f5 taken there twice, and we're safe. So, with that being in mind, people usually do h3, h3 to prepare g4. In this case, we go rook f8, like we did before. So, they go g4, we do bishop h6. It's important that we do bishop h6 here with the king h7 in this line. So, they go, let's say, queen h4, we go bishop f4, attacking the rook on d6. They can take on h5 to be clever. We go g5 now. Didn't expect that from the white side. They go queen f2. We take the rook. They take back. We go b4. Aggressive things are coming up. And they go, let's say, queen e4, attacking the b pawn. We go knight b7, attacking the rook again. So they go a6 to try to do a mate. But rook g8, no problem at all. And we'll just say continue rook b6, attacking the knight. We go knight c5. Back, no problems. At this point, black is really, really good. Really beyond compensation at this point. I'll say that I like to play as black between the two sides. Really cool thing is, after b5, b5, d5, knight d5, knight e6, knight b6, queen takes b6, knight d6, queen takes e3, queen takes e3 back, bishop b6, castle queen side, knight d7, rook d6, rook c8, doubling up. Nice e5, gb1, castles kingside. And the cool thing is, the really cool thing is, we're already done. 
Everything else is really, really simple. If they go A3, you go A5. If they go, for example, if they go F4, we go work F8. It's basically a, a standard thing to have a rook on E8, this line, the variation that rook belongs on the E file from the F8 square. So, for example, if they go instead E5, we go rook F8. Again, the same principle. And again, I'll say stressing, C5, A5, simple moves, a5, rook f8, easy game for black, and no, really, really, in this case, for white. So, in that case, black has an easy plan to try to play for the win, easy plan in general, and black is left to have a lot of fun to play this game. So, we're back here after b5, bid g5, knight d5, knight d5, e6, knight b6, queen takes b6, knight e6, queen takes e3. Queen takes e3 back, bishop b6, castles queen side, knight d7, takes in d6, rook c8, doubling up, knight c5. Let's say there's other variations that we can talk about. Let's say you go queen g5 ready, already queen g5. A little bit of difference, but you know what? We just do the same thing, castles king side. So, then go king b1, it's basically transposing in there, just king a7, like we saw before. And there's no problems here. Let's say if they go rook d8. There's a really little difference. Rook d8 is another move, but no worries. King a7 anyways. King a7 anyways. So at the takes on f8, we took with the bishop. It's important to take with the bishop, defend the knight on c5, not losing it. So they go king b1, we go knight e4. Then we go, for example, rook d8 to transform and tr like, trade off more things, but we go refusing to rook c5. And black is having a really good game. No problems for black. Bishop 7 is coming in. We have a lot of fun here. So now let's talk about another major variation of this one. b5, bishop g5, knight d5, knight d5, e6. Now knight takes e6 can be played sometimes. So now it is important to know how to play against this one. Be careful, because if we do bishop takes e6, we go as white. They can go bishop b6. Annoying. Nowhere to stop this nice e7 check, but don't worry about this. Variations will be really good for black at the end of the day. So, after queen c8, it's important to do this one. Nice e7 check. King f8. Just tucking away the king. This goes knight takes a8 or queen d6 check. Let's say queen d6 check because a lot of people do this in blitz or something like that. But king g8, knight takes a8. Now we go bishop takes b2. Taking the rook on a1, they go doubling up. Knight d7, looking at this, you know, knight on a8. Queen g7, but no problems at all. We go king g7 to connect the rook and the queen together. And we'll take this knight eventually, and there's no problems for us. And knight goes, if they go knight, you know, c7, for, for example, then knight takes b6 is a really good way to just try to play for the win is black. So again, let's review. b5, bishop d5, e, knight takes c5, knight d5, e6, knight takes e6, f, bishop takes e6, bishop b6, queen c8, knight c7, king f8, knight takes a8 is another move, and we do this novelty. Queen c6, attacking the knight right away, also putting pressure on the bishop on b6. And let's say the normal move is queen side castling, we just take the knight in a8 right away. They take this d6 pawn with check, king g8, like we normally do, and there's no problems. I'll say that black is already slightly better. So now we finally can close the chapter after b5, bishop d5. We're completely done with that. Let's move on to the more popular let's say, move bishop b3. And the theme that we'll just keep in mind is we go knight d7 to go knight c5, and maybe later do bishop b7. Not bishop b7 first, we want to do, importantly, knight d7, knight c5. Don't worry about knight c6, not a worry at all. So, they go queenside casting most of the time, we go knight c5, like we wanted to do. Taking to b3. So, sometimes people do king b1 or rook h e1. Let's say king b1 first. We go, in this case, novelty, bishop d7. Not bishop b7, but bishop d7 is important to do with it. So, 
Brookcase e1, castles kingside, natural, and bishop a6. So saying, okay, you move the rook from the h file, I'll do this one right now. But don't worry, don't worry. We are verified this, Zogfish, Leela, whatever. And it's fine, we have fun still as black. So we go, rook c8. Then you do a lot of moves, let's say knight d5 is the main move here. So we go knight c5. All right, they go a takes d. We go a5, aggressive in the queen side. So they can do a3 or bishop takes g7. Let's say a3 first, b4. Just trying to stack a pawn to have kind of play and really good pressure on the queen side. They go a b, a b. This bishop b7 first, and then queen takes b4. That way the queen will be not tethered to the bishop on e6. So we go rook b8. They go queen c3 to discover attack possibly. We go king g8 to not let them have any fun, not even a little bit. And they go g4 to be aggressive, but we go hg, fg, rook b7 to try and double up. And also hidden idea, we can maybe go queen a8 as black. Sometimes we would want to go queen a8. So, what goes usually rook e3, doubling up, maybe having a ro rover to rook a3, maybe just this really crowded square. So, the game usually goes queen a8 as black, rook a3, like you want to, rook a7, try to throw in mate, and one. So, black has to really have threats in order to come up really with something to show for, but rook a8 is a normal move. But we take this one, knight 5 check, and f6. And black is totally really, really better. And we have to, as white, waste time to defend the mate. And we have all the fun in the world, and no problems for black to be seen. So going back here, so now let's review. After b5, bishop b3, we go knight 7 They go queenside castling, knight 5 Let's say if they go, the other move, rook he1. Is a novelty, but not bishop b7. The same thing we talked about before. Doesn't matter if they go rook as one or king b1. Bishop d7 is the go-to move to play here as black. So they can do something like bishop g5. is a normal move. It's really have a cool idea. Later on, we'll see. We go castle and king side, but now knight d5, like we said before. e6 is important to have. Knight d6. Bishop f6, bishop f6, queen f6, knight e2. And the point is, after a5, we go queen d6, attacking the pawn and trying to take the knight in c5. We go rook c8, defending that knight, c3, and b4, opening up things, and black is having a really fantastic good game, and we have no promises with black, and we have a lot of fun attacking the white structure, and I think that black's pieces are be really coordinated to try to play with the win and we have a lot of fun ideas to try to play and crash through the queen side so we're back here let's talk about this one this should be three ninety seven castle queen side ninety five king b1 let's say king b1 there this should be seven rook h1 castle king side there's other moves here that we didn't talk about let's say if they go in this case this bishop g5 move instead. Bishop g5 move in this particular case. Then we go rook e8. It's important to know the nuances that we go rook e8 in this very specific variation. So they go to d5 like we've seen before, but we know we do knight takes b3, attacking the bishop and attacking the queen. So they could do knight takes b3 or knight takes f6, no matter. Knight d5 in that case, ed, a5. And black is, I'll say, clearly better. So after b5, bishop b3, knight d7 is a common move that is really popular in Bliss. Instead of castle and queen side, they go knight d5. It's important to know this little difference. In this case, with the knight d5 early accelerated, we go bishop b7 in this case. Whenever you see the knight coming to d5 early, go bishop b7. Not knight d5, but bishop b7. And to corral the intentions of aggression from white, and basically the game continues this way. Castle queen side, knight d5, they go rook h1, knight b3, knight b3, bishop b5, ed, 
A5 going for the jugular. Then the D4, no problems. Queen D7, depending on the B5 pawn. Knight C6, they're trying to be clever, but E6 comes in the wing. So they go, let's say, Bishop G5. We go Castle King side. Bishop takes F6, takes their back king at B1. ED, Queen D, and also Rook F C8 attacking the knight. And they go back to the knight d4, we go b4. Knight b5, no worries. Just really clever move. Rook a6. And there's no worries. If they go, if they dare to go, let's say knight d6, we are winning pieces this way. This queen will be really in big trouble. If the knight moves, I'll just take the queen. And you know, things are gonna be really good for black at the end of the day, and there's no problems for black. All right, finally, we're going to talk about the last lines after b5, bishop b3, knight d7. Let's say the last line is after knight d5, bishop b7. There's all the lines that white can try to do. Let's say they go castle and king side. If they go castle and king side, we'd know just go knight d5, bishop d5, take their back, and then knight b6, targeting the d5 pawn with knight. So then now they go nice six to be trying to be cheeky. We go queen c7. So after the bishop b4, we just do knight c4, a really cool in between move. We don't worry about the taking g7 because we'll take the queen on d2, attacking the rook on as well as f1. So no problems there. So they go queen f2. We go taking the bishop on d4, and we go queen b6, trying to trade off queens. And I'll say black. Is slightly better at the end of the day, and we're really happy to trade the queens off. So again, let's review b5, bishop b3, knight d7, let's say knight d5, bishop b7. Let's say the other variation that we can look at is bishop g5 in this sort of configuration. Bishop g5 here, we go knight d5, bd, queen b6 is important to see. Queen b6 happens, bishop b3, trying to have a leash, a discovery. We go, in this case, knight c5, but block the discovery. Maybe knight b3 is coming in the game. They go castle and queen side. In this case, a5 in the face. a3. h4 is a point, let's say, subtlety. Rook h1. We go rook h5. Really cool move. Just, just notice that after knight c6, we go bishop c6. d c. Knight b3. Takes in b3, queen c6, shot, king b1, and we also have us king f8 move subtly, king side castling by hand. And black is just totally better. If you just analyze this with a computer, engine, whatever, black is totally creaming white in this position. So now let's move into the second major section we'll call part b. As after c5, now f3, d6, cd, that takes d4, knight f6, knight c3, g6. Bishop b3, bishop b7, f3, a6, queen d2, h5, and now let's see another move besides bishop c4. Let's say they castle queenside right away. Not bishop c4 wasting tempos, but queenside castling right away. It's very common to do this one, but we go king, just p5 right away. Regardless of the bishop on the c4 square, b Three square or d5. This b5 move is a commonplace thing to see a dragon door variation. So, why can go king b1? We go bishop b7. So, they go, let's say, if they're cowards, they can go a3, but knight d7, something that we've seen before. So, they can go bishop b3 to develop this way, but knight e5. So, bishop b3 again, knight, d5, knight e5 is important to just lock this control of maybe c4. c4 is coming up, maybe open the b fell up. And we have a lot of choices that we have. So let's say f4, knight c4 happens. Take there on c4, bc, and also e5. Trying to do scary things with this pawn, but we go knight e4, attacking the center. Knight takes e4, bishop takes e4. Then you do rook h1, trying to be actual scary, scary, actually the king on the e file, but no worries, commonly ignoring the pressure and applying our own. So rook b8, bishop f2. But now we go queen b6, trying to then um, check mate. No time to take the bishop because mate is coming next move. So they go queen b4. Then this, trade this one off. And then d5 is solidifying the control 
of this bishop a4 and just using the fact that we have the bishop pair and this weak queen side to have extra fun to attacking the white pieces so at this point let's review this queen side costing again b5 king b1 bishop b7 let's say the other move that is not the calorie move let's say they develop right away bishop e2 27 they go h3 to go g4 right away we go b4 okay knight a4 happens queen a5 attacking putting more pressure on the a4 knight they go b3 weakening a little bit of the queen side but this is all we want to see as you five putting more pressure a3 trying to be cheeky again we can't take the pawn a3 because the queen a5 is hanging so we go knight takes a4 instead a b queen c7 back b takes a4 we go bishop takes e4 a really cool shocker tactics so after f takes e knight takes e4 and eyeing this knight c3 possible fork now queen e3 so knight c3 king c1 we want to do a dragon door swagger move that in the case i don't take the rook in d1 we want to do something more let's say sinister with rook c8 totally diabolical move that is basically ending up to a lot of pressure to win the game so why well, could try to do bishop of three and we go castle and king side no problems now it's an c6 try to be clever but cleverness runs down after d5 bishop b5 knight d5 queen d5 we e6 really cool move queen d6 just take on c6 and the pressure after bishop g5 trying to say oh just call it digest now but rook b8 rook b is coming in the f5 just try to extinguish the fire of the dragon dwarf but now rooks take c5 it's saying okay you don't have anything to do because they have to take this one you know we're gonna have a win in a clever looking way you want to document this one king bishop a6 check rook d2 rook d8 we have to double we have to table there's no question about it king f8 c6 bishop c2 and at this point it's merely important that you make the right move so don't take the rook d2 we go king e7 instead and one last trick that white can try is playing c7. Don't trade the rooks because c8 queen, it'll be an internet so, so take there. Queen c8 is a really bad win for white. So instead we go rook c8 and black is totally winning c7. And we have some extra pawns and we have a really easy game for black to win. And to finally finish off this video, we'll talk about the third most popular move. We talked about the first most popular move, which is Castle and Queenside. The second most popular move, which is Special G4. Now we can't forget the third most common move, and everything else is suddenly seen. So we want to just have a finishing touch about talking about Bishop E2. It's really important to know how to play against this one. So let's talk about it right now. Bishop E2 happens now with Bishop E2. We have permission, keep it in your mind, to go Knight c6 a very aggressive choice we determined with the engines so they can go castle queen side knight d5 or castles king side let's do the castles queen side move a very natural move reply and we go bishop b7 possibly going to go b5 and just storm the queen side though king b1 but instead a b5 we determined with leela and sockfish that rook c is more correct more to the point for trying to play for the wind a b5 knight d5 is annoying so let's do rook c8 first so well, i can go a3 or rook h1 let's say h3 again patience is required if they go h3 go h4 to stifle this d4 push a little bit and after f4 then we have permission to go b5 so there's two choices a3 a bit of three let's do, look at the worst option first a3 is very slow but we go with this castle and kingside novelty better than the queen c7 move that is usually seen after this one there's a ton of moves L let's look focus on the main ones that have exclamation points like f5 f5 happens now it takes d4 push makes d4 now the classic rook sacrifice exchange sacrifice of the sicilian rook takes c3 a classic one queen c3 now takes c4 queen e1 defend the dark squares and after bishop f5 they take on g7 taking h4 and we have this queen b6 move 
and we have a fun game. Really good chances, good diagonal pressure of the bishop, and good weak scores to target. Rook C is coming, and we have a good game to try to play for the win. Somebody's going to win, and I like our chances to not draw at least. So we're going back to the list of options. The one more we have to look at was this Rook HF1. Really clever one, really not so commonplace, but. It's not human, actually. We determined it's not human, but it's really solid the line. But if they do play this one, we determined with Stockfish and Leela, the best we can do to have an unclear but fun game is to go B4. AB, Knight takes B4, F5, and we determined this is unclear. But we have a Queen C7 move, A5 plan is coming up. But all this being said, you want us to look this male game up and determine how to play your way. But this is not really in troubles for black. And it's not really better for white. And we're going to have a fun game. Nothing less. Somebody's going to win. Hopefully it's going to be black. And this is a really solid line. If in just in case. If they were to play Rook HF1. Luckily not. Let's go way back to Bishop E2. And let's review what happens here. As black. Knight C6. Cat's the queen side. Bishop B7. King B1. Rook C8. H3. H4. F4. B5. And then instead of a3, the better option is bishop f3. We go, queen c7, not unusual to see here. Knight b3, castles king side. And now they have knight d5 or queen f2. Let's say knight d5. We take that one. And now knight b4. And this is a trap. So a lot of beginners try to take this knight for free, but they get made in two. This one, this one, and this one. Because the bishop on g7 is holstering the protection of the queen, and the game is over, and you win. So most people that are seeing this will not will take not to take the knight, but defend on c2 with rook c1. The bird option, of course. So now we go a5, attacking this way. So a3, knight a6 is all fine. And they can take on a5. It's fine to take their back. And now b4. Charging this way. And I think that black is, is in an unclear position. But I think that black has a lot of fun playing this game. Bishop f5 is coming. And is really fun. Attack the white side of things. And you can open up many ways if you want to. And I don't want to shy away from this variation as black. And just have fun. So it's now important to highlight this next variation. So it's a little bit scary, but don't worry, we have it solved. So after bishop b2, we go knight c6, again a review, castle's queen side, bishop b7, king b1, we go rook c8, h3, h4, f4, b5, bishop f3, we go queen c7, knight b3, we go castle and king side, and now let's say queen f2 happens. So we go b4, they go knight d5 usually. So every time we see knight d5, take that off with knight on f6. We do. They take their back knight e5, and you're really worried at this point that oh, there's a fork. You're gonna lose. Resign now. Don't worry. You're not resigning. We're trying to play for the win, and don't be saying that I'm crazy. We have a really fun variation, but it's scary for, for like first glance. But I'm promising you, you're gonna have a lot of fun because queen c2, queen c2, rook c2, king c2. After Let's say bishop f5, the best move is king d2, but now knight c4 fork, and it'll take the bishop on this square on b6, so king e2, knight takes b6, and we have also a lot of pressure on this pawn on b2. So we don't have any words, we're going to lose the game, it's very imbalanced, we're going to take on b2 for free, we're going to have a lot of conversations, the pawns in the center are really weak at d5. It'd be really, really fragile about the bishop of three being paralyzed, everything. And it'll be a really exciting game. Rook A is coming, possibly. And I'll just promise you that this game will be dynamic. Somebody's going to win. And we have, if for black, a lot of chances to poke holes to white's defenses. And we'll win the game. But don't be scared. So after seeing that scary variation, this next version is really... Really tactical and fun, cool, and if you know the variation really well, you'll be having a lot of miniature wins as black. So let's see how this goes. So knight c6, we have queen side castling, bishop b7, king b1, rook c8, h3, h4, f4, b5, bishop f3, queen c7, knight b3. After castles king side, there's knight queen f2, there's queen f2 here, and we go b4. 
and more commonly is knight a4. Now the fun begins after something like e5. It's really cool after knight b6. We take this cool way on f4. Trying to take this bishop with an interrupt move. Okay. So after knight b6. So after knight a4, there's a really cool move that Stockfish endorses that we really, really agree with is knight. Okay. So after knight a4 was the more common. So after knight a4 was the more common, we have Stockfish to show us really cool variation that is really much his style. Okay. So after so after knight a4, Stockfish showed us really cool and interesting line that is really sharp. Tactical, but overall fun to play. And this e5. They go knight b6, we don't care. e6, f4. They take back, but we go this cool move, knight e5. Stunning move. And they took the rook, but no worries. We take that with the rook back on a fate. And Zockfish says black is better. And with the clear compensation that we have control of those really good apples on e5. And we have some really sort of good pressure on this c file and Stockfish overall checks it out to be really good good game so now let's take a moment to see the best reply to the dragon dwarf in all of chess and the very end of the day a lot of crazy lines happen that compares up to pawns as white but it doesn't matter the game is draw and black is coming up with a actually even game it's not better or worse but actually survives the computer onslaught to try his very best to try to beat the dragon door, but it fails. Let's see what this means. So the best try against the dragon door is this one by the computers. No humans will be playing this one because it's crazy, but we'll see what happens. Nice and six. Castle Queen side. Bridge B7. Keep you one. Brook C8. This Brook AG1. Bridge seven. 7 Knight B3. B5. Bishop g5, bishop b6, f4, f4 in particular is the computer move, and the craziness comes after moves like knight a5, f5, knight b3, whichever takes on b3 back, gf, bf, bishop f5, bishop b3, bishop d3 rather, defuse the trade, knight e2, so these moves you can just look at in slow motion. But at the end of the day, we're down two pawns, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. We have an equal draws and game. And there's a cool showcase that even though black is down two pawns, practically speaking, a computer versus computer match, it'll be a draw every time. So white just plays his best line of all of Dragondorf line history, but it's not enough. Even with two pawns, give it to white, it's not enough. Black is able to survive this one, but computer versus computer, white is up to pause, but doesn't add up to win as white. Let's talk about a little side difference about the line that is more human, that is not really computer generated craziness. So, nice to six, castle's queen side, bishop b7, king b1, we go rook c8, after rook g1, we go queen c7, they go knight b3, we go b5, bishop b5. Bishop b6, they go knight d5, a more human move right here. But now we have this bishop d5 here. e5, knight e5, c3 to make sure that the queen can do the move somewhere and not defend c2 forever. Now we go kingside castling, bishop a6 natural. We go knight c4, attacking the queen, they trade that off. b takes c4, knight d4, queen e7, knight c6, we have. Rook f8, defending g7, bishop g7, king g7, and black. At the very end of the day, Stockfish and Leela says his black is slightly better. So let's look at the final variation involving the king side castling. So after this knight c6, king side castles, bishop b7, they go king h1 right away. We go rook c8, knight d5, take that one, takes that one, castles king side, take g7, queen d4, king g8 is a very important touch. C3, rook f8, rook a1, e5, trying to strike this way. Take the opposite, bishop takes e6, a3. We have this light squared control domination with the black pieces, bishop b3, rook d2 defending a2, rook c5, 
Bishop d3, rook d5, and it concludes that we have really good structures. We have really good control of light squares and blocks weaknesses are apparent. We have better coordinated pieces. And this concludes finally how to play the Dragon Door Sicilian for the fun, theoretical, sharp, and aggressive way to play for the wound as black. Hey, check this video out to make sure that you get more important information to bring your chest to the next level.